Okay, ladies and gents, my goal in um, making this video is to show how to disassemble the BC Racing BR coilover insert or shock. I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step, um, tutorial and how to take it apart, what tools to use, and um, maybe in some later videos I'll also show the math as far as calculations on determining uh, what shims to use internally to get the dyno graph that you want, shock dyno graph that you want. Um, so yeah, this is the start, this is an actual BCBR racing insert. It comes with this as the uh, bump stop, stock bump stop. It's pretty stiff. I did cut off the, this uh, small portion on top here and leave the remaining two. It made a difference and gave me some more travel. But what I do now is I just opt for a Coney insert, a Coney bump stop insert, 14 millimeter inside diameter. And I have a post which is very thorough, which I'll put inside the bottom of the video in the comments, indicating what parts, uh, part numbers, and what have you. It's actually on clublexus.com, and it's called, it's called, uh, uh, do it yourself, DIY shock revalve parts one through three. So type in DIY shock revalve uh, parts one through three in Google and even clublexus.com and hit enter and it'll lead you to the link. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. Okay, so the parts. The parts that you will need are an Allen wrench king set. Uh, I think it's size number 330 seconds. Hold on, let me, no. It is 5 64ths is what you'll use. You need this Allen wrench or Allen key, 5 64ths, to take out the little Allen screw on the base of the shock. This is where you're going to relieve the air pressure or uh, nitrogen from the shock. You'll need a size 17 millimeter wrench, and that is to remove on the shaft, there's an actual um, locking nut. You'll need that to release it and remove it. You'll also need a, uh, gosh, I don't have it here. But it's a 5 millimeter, and I'll show it in a second, a 5 millimeter um, Allen head socket. Pretty much you'll stick that in the adjustment uh, area here. Not necessarily where you adjust and make adjustments, but more so it will stick in here to secure this while you take the 17 millimeter wrench and you free that nut. You hold it in place to do so. And I'll, like I said, I'll show that in a second. A spanner wrench. You use this once pressure is relieved from the shock. You'll use this, put this like so, and you'll spin it in such a manner to break the uh, the dust the dust seal uh, free. Unscrew it and take this out. That way you can lift the innards out after you, you remove the C-clip that's on the inside. All this is in that post I listed on clublexus.com. Do it yourself shock revalve. I also have here a pressure gauge, a PSI gauge. Um, one end is where the needle goes, the nitrogen needle, you'll need here. I don't know if you can see that, but the nitrogen needle will go on here. In here, you'll tighten it down. And then over here is where I have um, this particular nipple. I don't know the size of it, but I know it came with my uh, HPA, which is high pressure air nitrogen refit tank refill kit. And stick it on like so. It's in place. That's that end, and on the other end, uh, what we have is this. This is what goes into the actual HPA nitrogen tank, not your regular um, paintball nitrogen tank. This is used for paintball, but it, you utilize this to refill your nitrogen paintball tanks on your own. You don't play with this tank. So this can hold up to 3,000 psi. That's the max that this particular one is set at. 3,000 psi. Some models can do 5,000 psi. Uh, 48 C cubic, I don't know, CU. Uh, I got this off eBay with this particular cord. Total was, I think, $45. You can get them for 60 bucks now as a kit. Every five years, you have to have them uh, retested, hydrostatic tested, to make sure it can still hold that pressure. Uh, average paintball shop, to refill this, I paid $2 with nitrogen. Um, you can use air. I don't recommend using air for a shock, though. Um, reason being is because uh, air contains uh, water, water moisture within the air. 
So as the shock heats up, the water comes in contact with metal parts, you don't want that. Nitrogen is uh, kind of like dry air, drier air. So you don't have to run into that issue. And also, uh, nitrogen doesn't uh, change pressure as much, anywhere near as much as regular air. When you go from uh, hot to cold, outside temperatures are hot or cold, it could affect the, the performance of the shock. So those are some things you need to think about. But these are the tools, and so um, I'm going to get started on showing you how to disassemble this step by step. Okay, this is that one piece I, showed you, I told you I wanted to show you. It's a uh, hex bit metric set. I got this Duralast kit from AutoZone. It was about 17 bucks or so. If you go to Harbor Freight, it'll be much cheaper. But if you take a look, it goes on your socket. On the other end, it's hex bit. Purpose of this is to stick it in the shaft. Take your, your uh, socket wrench here and secure it and hold it in place. Well, I'll use the 17 millimeter to break that nut that's on the shaft internally to free that so you can get at the shim stack and also the uh, the piston shock piston as well all right so first things first we are going to relieve the pressure from the shock so to do that I get my 560 fourths hex bit here and I Underneath the date sticker, if you can poke a hole, you'll see that there's a little hole where you could stick this in. And once you take this off, this little, I don't know if you can see here on the camera, uh, there you go, this little hex screw, you have access to a self-healing uh, rubber seal within here. So that's where you come about and use your put this away before I lose it. Uh, I'll put this right here. Right now. That's where you come about and use your nitrogen needle. Now these can be had on eBay. I think I got five for like eight bucks or so. Um, but yeah, nitrogen needle by itself. You go ahead, uh, let's get in close here, and you slowly puncture the shock. The self-healing rubber seal. If you listen closely, hold on. So now I'm relieving the nitrogen from the shock. Now, before the video, I, I charged these myself to 200 PSI, just to give you an idea. So as I do this now, I push the shaft all the way down to see if I can get any more out. And as I do this, now you have two options. Um, in the past, what I've done is I'd remove this, set it to the side, and use the spanner wrench to free this up. Now, I would secure the shock body. I did secure the shock body in a um, bench table vise with some towels wrapped thoroughly around so you don't pinch or crimp the threads as you tighten it down. Um, it can work that way. It's a little bit harder to do. So what I recommend, if you have access, try and get what's called a plumber's vise or a pipe vise. Um, it's more so a, kind of like a chain that wraps around. You put your towel around still, wrap the chain around, lock it in place, and as you ratchet it, the chain secures this, the cylinder in place. It's more meant for round versus um, a table vise, which is flat. Or, um, if you go on the net, they also have what's known as um, shock blocks. So. They're, they're, picture two halves of a block with a circle cut out in the center and you can stick it on like so and as you tighten your table vise these blocks will secure the shock in place. You can purchase those, um, they're not cheap or you can make your own if you have access to um, woodworking tools and what have you and some spare wood blocks around. For me I just use the table vise method. So uh, let's see here, I'm hoping that I didn't put it on too tight last uh, the last time I did this. If I did what I'll do now is I'll take this, set it on the floor, like so. Since I don't have my table vise with me here, I'll get a, imagine my foot is connected to this. Uh, this is the best I got right now. Step on it and use my table vise to kind of break it free. So I'll do that, I'll come back and I'll show you the end result of this being loose.